In Pit Lane is proudly brought to you by Dino Tech by Dino Dynamics. For your nearest workshop, visit our website. And with the support of the Ramada Resort, Phillip Island. Welcome back to In Pit Lane. Well, as we told you on last week's program, the Confederation of Australia Motorsport is about to introduce next year Formula 4. Formula 4 is the new FIA designated first step on the ladder, or I suppose the transition between karting and full-scale motorsport. It's going to be held right around the world in places currently being run in Italy, but will next year be run in places like uh, Japan, Germany, right across the world, and of course, as we said, in Australia. But not everybody's happy about the scenario, and to find out where this affects other categories, in Australia, in particular, our current uh, formula that served us over the years, Formula Ford, from Formula Ford Australia, it's Andrew Sill. Andrew, welcome to In Pit Lane. Hi, Brett. Good to be back. Now, as I said, Formula Four, the FIA have sort of dictated that this is going to be the sort of the standard ladder right throughout the world. It's uh, Formula Ford in, in England are, are, are moving to those regulations. We've got uh, F Germany will have a series, Japan will have a series, I think Brazil's got a series. It's happening everywhere. Why, what's the problem with Formula Ford uh, with Formula Four? Um, well, not, not a lot really. Um, that um, Our sort of stance has been that we've got nothing against another category coming into the country, um, the question is really more for CAMS in the way that they've gone about introducing the, uh, the category. And just because you introduce a category doesn't mean they're, they're, it's a viable category in the Australian marketplace. And there are a lot of countries around the world that haven't adopted Formula 4 at, at the moment. Um, but yeah, the, the cars look great and um, you know, the, the concept uh, has, got, has got legs, potentially, but it's only as good as the country's um, you know, being able to adopt it and being able to implement it. And I suppose some of the issues that Formula Ford has had is more relate to um, the role of CAMS as category manager and purchasing cars. And, and I think that it's just not Formula Ford. We've been singled out, but um, it's not just Formula Ford people that are sort of questioning CAMS decisions to move down, down that path of purchasing cars. As you said, that is probably the thing that surprised everybody, the fact that CAMS themselves are going to run this series. Not only are they going to administer it, but as you say, they are going to actually buy the cars and lease them out to to teams. I mean, are you concerned as CAMS members, are you concerned about what will happen? I mean, if it all works, it's fabulous news. If it doesn't work, have you been told what the fallback situation is? If this falls in a heap, who carries the can? Yeah, I think that, that's one of the biggest issues, that there's so many outstanding questions around Formula 4 um, and questions that need to be answered, not just for, for the members, but also for the prospective competitors. So there's still a lot of, a lot of questions and, and a lot of risks in, in, involved in it. And, if you've been involved in running motor racing series or owning cars, you know what risks are associated in owning cars. And um, you know, CAMS have committed to buying 20 cars. Um, what happens if they only lease out half of them? What happens with the other 10? What happens with bad debts or um, cars that may be written off, etc.? There's a lot of lot of questions that are associated with it, and they wouldn't be asked um, if if it was an independent body that was running it. But as it is a motoring association that's supposed to represent all categories. Um, these questions are being asked. So, and they may have valid answers, but we haven't heard what those answers are as, as a membership group. And I suppose it questions the role of CAMS as being a, a body that's supposed to represent and promote all aspects of motorsport and all categories. And um, as a group of Formula Ford competitors, um, I think we can sort of feel that we've been pushed aside a bit, but we're still very, very confident for the future of Formula Ford because we've just got the momentum at the moment. We've got increased participation and we still have a very valid formula for developing drivers. So um, we're confident that Formula Ford will be OK and could coexist with Formula Four. I suppose that's part of the argument because, as you say, you have been singled out. In fact, Eugene Rocker, the CEO of CAMS, who incidentally will be a guest on the program next week. Um, 
He did single you guys out mm. and uh, basically said that Formula Ford was pretty much past its use by date. Um, it's not a Wings and Slicks formula, it's a space frame chassis. Uh, do you think that your cars are still relevant as a training ground in this modern day when everybody is going into Wings and Slicks racing and everyone wants a, basically a spec series where all the competitors are driving the same, to the same machines? Yeah, I think this has been some of the misinformation that's come out about Formula Ford, that it um, hasn't been affordable, there hasn't been parity um, amongst different cars and so on. And quite frankly, it's incorrect. That if you have a look at the racing this year, um, we, the racing's been extremely close, there been multiple winners in different chassis and different teams and so on. And I think as far as you know, the future of Formula Ford and is it, you know, is it still viable, answering that question, well, we've increased participation this, this, this year. Formula Ford is still the largest open wheeler category racing at national level. Um, we've been racing on the Shannon's Nationals bill, bill which has been excellent. Um, we are consistently have got um, some of the highest grids. So, look, I think that people can say whatever they like about Formula Ford, but the evidence is there to suggest that it's not going anywhere anytime soon, that the, the momentum is still strong and, and increasing. What about the cost of running Formula Ford? It was one of the criticisms that really for what you were getting, the, the cost for running, particularly when you were with the V8 supercars, not so much mm. now, but the, the costs were getting out of, out of control. We heard figures of over $200,000 just for a state series at the very top level. What sort, of, what sort of costs are they running at now? Yeah, I think a lot of those costs have been overestimated, dr dramatically overestimated, which, which, is, which has been um, you know, a bit disappointing that... Look, with motorsport, if people are wealthy, they can spend whatever they like. And, you, and it's very hard to, to stop somebody from um, you know, spending as much as they like. Even if you make as many restrictions as you like, there's nothing stopping somebody from racing a couple of categories and getting that competitive edge, um, you know, driving, driving in the car more. Um, the costs of Formula Ford have dramatically dropped, especially at national level, if we look at just national level racing. Um, we've halved the entry fees. We've drastically reduced the administration costs because... You know, as an association, the Formula Ford Association looked at everywhere where you can reduce the cost of running. Um, and we did that by um, taking off the V8 supercar bill, which reduced our costs straight away. We reduced the administration costs um, by utilising a volunteer network. So when we were criticised as sort of having vested interests and not being for motorsport, I think that the Formula Ford Association has really shown that we are 100% for motorsport, that we have um, worked our, our backsides off to keep it viable and reduce the cost for the competitors. So our main focus being the competitors. And you know, we, we increase participation, and that, that speaks for itself. we have on average, getting around 20, 21 competitors, which is more than previous years, and more than a lot of other categories that are running around at national level. So when that, uh, that a, a attack did come on you, and the talk about you basically being in it for yourself, I mean, has that hurt you guys? I mean, is, is that part of the problem, that um, the CEO of... of of your organisation has come out and really singled you out. Yeah, I think that, personally, yes, I, I was a bit offended in that um, the amount of time that I personally put in to get the series up and running has been quite, quite large and, um, and I've done it as a volunteer. And um, I have no vested interest in, and neither do a lot of the committee members in the Formula Ford Association. What our focus was on the competitor to reduce the cost from them. And that meant reducing administration costs, revising the model, reducing the rounds, um, to make it more affordable. And, and straight away, we cut something like thirty-five dollars to $40,000 off um, the national, you know, a, a budget to run at national level. We have some competitors running at national level spending less than $30,000 a year to run in the national series. And at the highest end, it's about $140,000 with a team and leasing of a car and et cetera. So we've dramatically dropped, dropped the costs. And, and it is still a very, very affordable category, though some people are sort of saying that, you know, it's not. Well, we'll see Formula Ford in action this weekend down at, uh, at Phillip Island. You're not running this weekend, but uh, no. we are going to see a big field down there. Um, good luck with it. As I said, we'll have Eugene Rocker on the program next week to, uh, to talk about, perhaps explain and answer some of those questions. But for now, Andrew Still, thanks for joining us in Pit Lane. Thanks, Brett. And we'll be back with more in just a moment. Don't go away. We'll be right back. More power, better fuel economy, a cleaner, more efficient engine. They're just a few of the advantages of having your car tuned on a Dynotech dyno. To find your nearest Dynotech workshop, go to dyno.com.au. Dynotech by Dyno Dynamics. <laughs> 